Good evening and welcome to part two of the Broomfield series. Tonight's episode is the Broomfield Blacksmith. Ah, hello there. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Please come on in. There's no need to be shy. It's warm and cosy by the forge fire. Ah, so you're the adventurer that's new in town. Yes, when I stopped by the inn last night, Tom mentioned that you might be by to take a look at my wares. More specifically, blades. Is that correct? Perfect, perfect. Well, you've come to the right place, as I obtained my smithing qualifications from the Royal Smithing College. Then I came back to Broomfield and set up my own blacksmith shop. Working at the forge at night can be quite hot, so I prefer to do most of my work in the evening, as the air is a lot cooler at night time. So how can I be of assistance this evening, traveller, looking to protect yourself? Okay, perfect. I can walk you through the process of finding the perfect blade. So the first part of the process is a blade consultation. So if you'd just like to get yourself comfortable, we can begin with the first part of the blade consultation. Great. So all I'm going to do is just simply measure you from head to toe and around your waist and your shoulders, just measuring all over your body. And this will allow me to find the perfect blade. Now we can make customs, however, being a traveller such as yourself, I think it would be great to just show you what I've already got in stock, as I suspect you'll be wanting to leave town as soon as possible. Does that sound okay? Perfect. So just get yourself comfortable, and I'll just get my tape measure and begin measuring you, okay? Perfect. Okay, if you just hold still. I'm just going to make a note of your measurements in my work ledger that I have. This will just allow me to refer back to them, should I ever need to make you some custom work, or if you require a different type of weapon, I'll know exactly which weapon to pick out for you. I hope you're still sitting comfortably. Perfect. I won't be a moment just making the necessary notes.
pretty confident I know exactly what type of blade will suit you best. Why don't you try this one out for size? Okay, I think that suits you perfectly. It's not so big as a long sword, and yet it's not as small as a dagger. It's just nice, in the middle, perfectly balanced. Now, what we can also do with this blade is infuse it with rune stones, and what they will do is hopefully give you an edge in certain situations. Now there should be a black leather pouch around here somewhere that contains my collection of rune stones that I've built up over the years, either by winning them in a game of cards, swapping them with other traders that visit, or back in my travelling days, finding them in the wild. Now let me just have a look for that pouch. Is it over here by chance? Hmm. No, maybe it's uh, back over this way. Let me see. Can't really see it anywhere. Hmm. Back over here, perhaps. Okay. Ah, I appear to have found it. So, I've actually picked out a couple of stones here that I believe will help you massively on your adventure. And if you'll allow me to, I'd just like to show them to you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first one that I recommend is the Red Firestone. As you're heading up into the mountains, it's no doubt going to get quite cold up there, and not always easy to make a fire. However, with the Red Firestone, you'll be able to use the tip of your blade to make a fire. That should keep you cosy and warm up in the mountains. Second, I'd like to recommend the Golden Light Stone. As you're walking around the tunnels and gloomy caverns of the mountain, it will be dark, and this stone will be able to provide you with light more powerful than any lantern or fire can, allowing you to see further into the darkness. And finally, a runestone fitting for all travellers and adventurers, the Ways runestone. If you ever feel like you're lost, Simply visualize where you want to be, and the way is runestone will help nudge you into the right direction. How do those runestones suit your needs? Perfect, 
Okay, great. We can move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have our rune stones selected, the next part is to bind them with the blade. Now I've got my special metal tweezers here, and of course they're not made by human hands, because we do not have the power to make such an instrument work with runestones. No, no, no. These are not human made. So all we have to do is take the stones, like so, and then place them onto the blade very carefully. Now, here comes the part where we have to be gentle. We take the tweezers and grasp it between the blade and the runestone and squeeze. And the runestone will then react with the metal, infusing it into the blade. Like I say, it's very important that we're firm but gentle. Just a nice squeeze is all it takes, but we don't want to break the runestone by squeezing too aggressively. Just some nice, firm squeezes of the tweezers will do. Like so. Alright, so that's the binding complete. Looks good to me there. Can you see all of the newly formed markings along the blade? That's a sign that this blade in particular now carries magical properties. However, from a smithing point of view, these markings tell the smither exactly what runestones are now infused into the blade. Should you take it to another smith for repairs, they will know exactly how to handle the blade. By looking at these markings that the runestones have made on the blade. It's really quite magical, isn't it? All the swirls and coloured lines that it gives the blade. Hmm. It looks quite beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, next, just to kind of start finishing off, I'm going to give the blade a nice polish to make it really shine. And I'm going to use a cloth with some blade oil that I acquired from an alchemist who was travelling through Broomfield one year. I'm not quite sure what's in the oil, but it keeps blades and armor shining for months and months. I've taken to calling it glistening river oil, because as you'll see in a moment, the oil shimmers in the light. It's quite amazing, really. Okay, so let's get the cloth and the oil, and we'll just begin polishing up your blade.
Alright, so I'm just going to wrap your sword up in some cloth that I have. This will just allow you to transport it through Broomfield safely, and it'll be less suspecting from the town guard. We don't want them getting any ideas trying to confiscate this from you before you've even set out on your journey. have a custom sheaf made for you and sent over to the inn before you depart. Thank you so much for stopping by this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you as my company for this evening and an even greater pleasure to help prepare you for your journey. I wish you the best of luck in the coming adventure and make sure you get back to the inn and have a good night's rest. Until next time, traveler.